I think I was drawn to ecological economics both uh, out of intellectual interest and, and probably out of my uh, kind of uh, personal uh, background. I grew up in a, um, a very wild place um, in southwestern Wyoming and I had um, parents who were very close to the earth uh, my mother ended up being a very kind of active environmentalist. In fact, ultimately she went to the University of Utah and um, started an um, environmental education program at the University of Utah. And, and so I had this kind of environmental consciousness, I think, uh, from, from the very start. Um, then I, I became very interested in uh, economic questions and the economic questions I w was initially interested in were questions of inequality um, and I ended up in a in a heterodox uh, economics program uh, at the University of Utah and that program um, really gave me a very critical uh, kind of iconoclastic perspective on the economic system we have, its logic and its dynamic, and so I had some appreciation for that. Um, and then in the in the 1980s, so I had this ecological kind of environmental orientation to begin with, and then this heterodox economics background, um, and a heterodox economics kind of economics that was very critical, uh, had a critical kind of perspective and approach to the economic system was not doing much on the environment at all. In economics, the only uh, discipline that, or paradigm that uh, uh, asked questions about the environment uh, and had a framework for talking about issues of the environment was uh, the neoclassical framework, which I was not drawn to at all from the very start. In fact, I was very critical of it. In the early 1980s, uh, uh, the human ecologist Paul Shepard, who was my stepfather, gave me a copy of Herman Daly's book, Steady State Economics. And that really kind of reoriented my thinking, um, because it was at that point that I really started to question. I had never really questioned the issue of growth before. And it was at that point that I really started to think critically about the issue of, of economic growth. Um, and then I, I, I was initially a labor economist and I just started uh, doing environmental, ecological economics and fully immersed myself in that uh, subfield um, and have been doing it ever since. I find it um, infinitely uh, interesting intellectually, but I also feel um, very passionate about the the historical moment we find ourselves in and the need to try to find some kind of answers to the kinds of problems which seem to be for, really formidable. Um, so that sort of gives you a, a history of, of my the way I personally come to why, why I was drawn to ecological economics. I think it's a paradigm in transition. Um, I think ecological economics has, um, in a way, uh, sort of lost its focus um, on issues of scale. And I think that's the focus that's actually the important focus uh, for it to have. It, it seems like there's a tremendous amount of work being done in um, ecosystem service valuation, you know, that kind of realm of natural capital and all of its extensions, which includes ecosystem service valuation. And I'm not suggesting that that's not um, worthwhile, but I think that it, it, it should not be the central focus of ecological economics. I think the central focus of ecological economics um, needs to be on the issue of scale. And in order to, 
to to understand the problem of scale, um, I think it's absolutely essential to understand something uh, about the logic and dynamic of our economic system and how difficult it is, in fact, to reorient this kind of system um, to to be compatible with uh, you know biophysical limits and ecological uh, foundations uh, of the of the earth. So I think that's sort of where it is right now, um, and I don't think it's a. I think that's the focus on ecosystem service valuation. I think that should not be the focus at this point. Well, I think it's probably headed in the direction that it's that it's going in, which is to concentrate on the valuation of ecosystem services um, and not to question more, not to uh, engage more foundational questions about the nature of the economic system and whether we need, um, you know, foundational kind of revolutionary change or whether reform. Uh, will be sufficient to uh, to to deal with with this historical moment. We we find ourselves with um, profound contradictions. Uh, we have high rates of unemployment and no way to deal with unemployment other than to try to pursue policies of more and more and more growth. And that's a reasonable uh, 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 objective when people depend on wage labor for their livelihood. Um, so I think um, I think it's going to go in the direction it has been going all along, unless the direction shifts. I think there's a potential for that direction to to shift, um, whether or not it will, in fact do that or not, I don't know. I mean, so in some ways, ecological economics reflects the broader kind of uh, environmental movement. And that environmental movement has been oriented around, um, you know, reforming the system, uh, rather than thinking in more revolutionary terms about what has to take place if we really want to alter the course that we're on. Um, I think there's a lot of critical perspectives in ecological economics that are boiling up kind of in the fringes. Um, and I'm hoping that the direction will be to embrace those uh, more uh, marginal, at this point, marginal kinds of uh, analyses and critiques and, um, and engage them. So I think I hope that's the direction that ecological economics will go. I'm not sure if it will, but I think that's the direction it needs to go. Except that I do think, um, you know, there have been times when I've thought about just leaving ecological economics altogether. I've been sort of frustrated with its direction. Um, but I think, I, I actually do believe that there's potential uh, in this in this subdiscipline paradigm, to um, to to move the discourse about the profound contradictions um, between our economic system and you know the biophysical ecological viability of our planet, I think there's the capacity to 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 move that conversation. Uh, forward, and I think we we are at a uh, uh, a really profound uh, historical moment where what we're able to do um, in the next twenty years is is going to make a, a huge difference in in the future, um, and so I think uh, ecological economics needs to feel more fully the um, burden of this historical moment. Um, I think we all need, and I think we need to ask 
the uh, what I like to call the unfathomable economic questions and truths. We need to engage those. Things that we don't know how to engage. Questions that seem, the kinds of questions that make people have a kind of deer in the headlights look about them, like how can we possibly engage that question? Um, I think those are the kinds of questions we need to, to engage in ecological economics. I think it needs to rise up to the, 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 in some measure, to um, acknowledge the, the, the really dire situation we're in. I think um, if we could concentrate on the question of how we provide people with jobs and maintain the biophysical and ecological integrity of the planet at the same time. I think that's an important question to think fully and expansively about. We have a system that seems like it has a profound and unresolvable contradiction, okay? That we need growth for employment, and yet growth uh, is no longer a real tenable um, uh, proposition given the biophysical constraints of the planet, okay? It's not easy to resolve that problem of employment and attending to the biophysical limits of the planet in the way this particular economic system is currently structured. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one way to think about just a kind of a, a concrete example. <laughs>